come on down, come on down. So can everyone see that screen? If you can't see the screen, please move around so you can see what's on the screen. Okay. Okay, enough room. If you're all crowded out, then you can always um, So who knew that this was the topic for this term? Uh, so it's romanticism. And has anybody come across this term at school? No? Yeah? Someone? Anybody? No? Okay. All right. So we'll talk a little bit about what it's about and what we can do with this. So this is about the Romantic movement. Romanticism was an artistic, intellectual movement originated in Europe towards the 18th century. Um, characterized by its emphasis on emotion and individualism. So, you know, kind of science was taking off at that time and scientific inquiry, and it was a little bit of a reaction against that. Um, and it says here, Romanticism was partly a reaction to the Industrial Revolution and the ideas of the Age of Enlightenment. So the Age of Enlightenment was kind of like scientific inquiry. Um, but it wasn't just painting. Um, or visual arts. It was literature, it was philosophic thought, it was music, and it's a really hard to define movement it, because you could say the Romantic movement is still going on today. And you'll see that in some of these slides later. Um, so it included painting, music, literature, poetry, design. Some of you have probably heard or even may have read some of those things on the other side there, like who's heard of Frankenstein? Yeah. I think most people have heard of Frankenstein, right? Um, or maybe a little bit more obscure, obscure Edgar Allan Poe, yeah? Uh, Grimm's of Fairy Tales, Jane Eyre, that might be a school text that you have a look at. And The Hunchback of Notre Dame, you're probably even doing that at school, or some of you are. Disney. Disney. Disney's very definitely. Um, okay. So, this is the one thing I want you to take away from this. If you forget everything else, romanticism is not thing, nothing to do with romantic. All right? Nothing to do with being romantic. Nothing to do with this kind of thing. It's more kind of this kind of thing. All right? It's more death note than kind of romantic element. This is the, from the romantic movement. Usually the nightmare. So it has a lot to do with dreams, the macabre, um, the imagination. This is um, a painting. Anyone seen this painting before? The Raft of the Medusa? Yeah, it's pretty famous. It's a huge painting. It's in the Louvre, and I'm sure some of you, you will go to the Louvre one day and you'll see this painting. It's enormous. It's larger than life size, so all the figures are huge. Um, and this is about a real historical event. Um, but it's about tragedy, you know, it's about human emotion, it's about people suffering, not really having a very good time. And, um, you know, the romantics were kind of a little bit gloomy, I think, as shown by this Goya, which is also another historical incident. Um, yeah, so they tended to dwell on the darker side of life. There were some who, uh, the other side of the romantic, this is dark romanticism. So romanticism also um, could have been, you know, a lot of the artists also did some of the light and um, uh, lighter paintings and lighter subjects and they were bright and cheerful but, um, uh, but they weren't very deep. They were more sort of just about, you know, emotions in the, in, in the moment. Um, a lot of the, like some of the French romanticism um, is like that. So this is like dark romanticism, yeah. which is a little bit more interesting to a lot of people. Yeah, and there's also a mystical ed element to their, their artworks. So this is a William Blake, uh, who's a poet as well as a painter, philosopher. Um, and also they like to look back into history. So things, anything to, that had to do with myths and legends, and especially uh, from the Middle Ages, around that time, really before the advent of science and, and I guess, rational thought, although it's debatable. Um, they liked stories from that time. 
And it's interesting, you were saying how um, it, it, it can be continuing on today. It, uh, romanticism can go across different art movements. So this is, you know, some might say this is from the pre-Raphaelites, mm. but it's also romantic. So, you know, a romanticism. So when you're thinking about art, sometimes, you, you know, things aren't necessarily slotted in one, in, uh, one genre or one... One box. Yeah, you often just can't pick a date and say, well, it started on this date and then it finished on this date. Yeah. It kind of spreads out either side of the, of the dates that's assigned to it. Um, this guy, truly romantic, you, and really you can't see very much detail in this, but um, there's some figures walking in, in, I think, oh no, not in this one, it's in another one. Um, Caspar David Frederick, who used to do a lot of landscapes. Uh, we've got a few of his paintings here, a lot of kind of eerie, spooky, gothic landscapes. This is a biblical scene. The other thing the Romantics were um, influenced by, impressed by, um, represented was nature. Now, I mean, you don't see too much nature like this. Caspar David Frederick was really a, kind of a landscape painter, I think, but he usually had a figure in there. This is another one of his, and this is another one of his. This is a very gothic even painting with these figures for some reason going into this derelict cathedral. Look at that great sky, the misty sky, and that mm. little fog. It's really foreboding and heavy. So it's, it's very cinematic. Mm. In fact, I think that some of his um, compositions have been used in cinema. And so if we come to contemporary art, we could say romanticism is still going in some contemporary art. And we could say romanticism is even going into cinema. I think most people have seen that maybe for Christmas. And you could even place this into ro the romantic vision. It's a Japanese artist and he's appropriated uh, the great way. So this is uh, a contemporary illustrator. And from my group, we'll be looking a little bit more closely at Abigail Larson. And you know, she definitely works in the Gothic genre. So even though romanticism formally has kind of finished as a movement, there are still artists today who you could classify as romantic artists. Now remember, romantic is not to do with romance. So, just to sum up, this is what uh, romanticism is all about. It's about power of nature, about strong emotions, power of the imagination, myth, supernatural, gothic imagery, and the glorification of the past. So, you know, I said that they were interested in history, they were interested in myths and stories from the past. They kind of placed that on a higher value than what was happening in the present. So, we have a little quiz now. <laughs> Romanticism or not, I'm going to show a few images and you can tell me whether you think that this fits into the romantic image or not. So first, a Mondrian, Broadway, Broadway Boogie Woogie. What do you think? No, it's really, yeah, us get the prize. Yeah, it's really rational, isn't it? It's really mathematical, it's really geometrical, mathematical, thought out and planned. It's not romantic. Okay. So it's a really easy one, that one. This one's a little bit tricky. What do you think? Romanticism or not? What do you think? Ong. Ong. Ah, uh, well, it, he's not the first. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah. So, yeah, well, it's, it's, well, she's, uh, it's the, um, uh, the, the thought, you know, like, you know, there's the... the it's pretty cool. It's pretty, it's know, pretty cool and considered. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's, you know... It's probably it's not romanticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a tricky one. Mm. Um, how about this one? Picasso. Delica. What do you think? Romantic? Does it fit into some of those categories that we looked at? Yeah? No? Yes? Yes, I think so. Because it's about, you know, it's about war, it's about human emotion, 
about tragedy. Does anyone know the name of the painting? I think you just said it. <laughs> anyone know it? Uh, this is a mirror. What do you think? Romantic? I don't think so. No. It's happy, it's kind of fun, but I don't think it's romantic. Although, although you could, I, I'm going to be contrary here, because he used to do things about uh, like his dreams and subconscious, the expressing. Oh yeah, I guess. But, yeah, but, but we're just no, a bit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? Definitely, definitely romantic. Turner, power of nature. Mm. It's a fierce storm. There's a ship that's probably about to go down. Mm. So yeah, definitely a romantic painting. Mm. Pretty obvious, this one, yeah. Mr. Rafi. How about this still life? No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> Too rational, cool, considered. It's in the moment, it's not saying anything. Finally. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. No? Yes, no? What do you think? Does anyone know Shakespeare? Anyone know the painting? Yeah. Yeah. Ophelia. Yeah. It's Ophelia. It's Ophelia, yes. Mm. Yes, the model, um, just as an aside, the model, the model for this had to model in the bathtub cold water for this painting in Court Pneumonia. <laughs> So that's tragic, isn't it? You know, that's a tragic story in itself. Okay, so that's what we're doing this term. And there's lots of scope to do a lot of different subject matter. You know, everything from landscape to figurative, um, almost abstract if you think about Turner's work. So, you know, you've got a lot to choose from. It's not like we did portrait last term, so portrait to portrait. Here, although you could do a portrait, it's, um, it's a romantic portrait. But there's a lot of subject matter that you can choose from and you can kind of really go to town with this. So, have a good turn. Have fun with this.